everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a process video on how to create these little library card pockets using a free template that is currently up on my website at ginamakesit.com. So if you want this little pocket template, just head on over there and click the download button. So I am creating six of these pockets using this Kirby Teasdale Studio paper from Hobby Lobby. I picked it up probably about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. So it's a fairly recent, or at least it wasn't mine, it was there. Um, it's a thinner paper. It's not exactly a cardstock. It's, I'd say, a little bit heavier than your regular old copy paper. But because the pocket is like a two sided type template, meaning uh, you're going to fold over the bottom and so you're going to see the back side. I want to create a double sided paper. So I'm just trimming these in half because I don't need the whole paper for the actual pocket. And then I'm just going to attach them together using a little bit of adhesive tape. When I start to actually trace the template on the paper, I have to readjust the way that I attached them. I need the front side to be right side up and I need the back side to be actually right side down because of the nature of the template you fold up the pocket so you see the back side and so if you would have them both right side up the back side would then fold up upside down versus right side up so you will see in a second exactly what I'm talking about Now I'm ready to start tracing my template. So I am kind of fussy tracing here because I want certain images on certain parts of the pocket itself. So at this point, I still haven't realized that it's going to flip up upside down. So I'm sort of starting to realize and I'm thinking, hmm, I'm kind of looking to see, okay, what's going to be shown when it does flip up. And so I'm tracing it. And once when I get to this next one that I'm like, wait a second, this is totally upside down. And I don't want these flowers to be upside down. And then I go back and I start looking at things. And then it's a super easy fix. I'm actually really glad that I didn't use glue. I don't know what possessed me not to use glue and what why I used the adhesive tape because it was really easy just to pull them apart and flip them around. And I do this as I'm working through tracing each each of the templates. I'm being very fussy, like I said, about what I want shown on that bottom pocket because that's sort of the whole focal point of the pocket itself. I'm all set and ready to start cutting out my templates and so I am just using a regular pair of scissors and I'm just going around the perimeter of my traced template and I'm just cutting it out very loosely. There will be some pencil marks like there always are. It's just inevitable when you're using a template like this. So I just go through as I'm assembling them with my eraser and it comes off very easily and you never even know that there was a trace shape on the paper itself. I'm ready to start assembling. And this is a very easy template to assemble. I first am going to fold in, I'm gonna call these the wings, the pocket wings. And because I glued or attached two pieces of paper together, it is a little bit harder to fold than if it was just one piece of cardstock or one piece of paper. So I am using my bone folder to get a nice sharp crease and a nice sharp line. So once I fold in my wings, you just 
fold up the bottom half and you can see this is what I'm talking about how it's double sided and how you're going to see that image and how that image has to be upside down on the back in order to be right side up on the front. So I am just taking my eraser and I'm going around the edges like I said getting rid of those faint little pencil marks and I am just going to fold in each little pocket wing and then fold up each little pocket and then I am going to move on to the next step which will be adhering everything together. I am going to sew mine together. You could very easily just glue it but I do like the look of sewn paper so that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to use these all together to document some reading that I've been doing and so that's why I kind of wanted them to coordinate with each other because I do believe that I am going to use them all in the same book or journal. I think I'm going to make an altered book. I thought the pockets would look nice on a book page so I think that's what I'm going to do and then I'm going to use the library card, the actual like checkout card that goes inside of the pocket to do my journaling and to document each book on. So that leads me to the library card. It was a nice little segue. So I recently launched a little series on my website called Free Vintage Friday and on Fridays I upload a free vintage image for your use in all of your projects and tomorrow is actually going to be the library card that is coordinated with this pocket so if you want the card that goes with the pocket just remember to head on over there tomorrow it gets posted very early in the morning and then you can just download it. there will be two versions there will be a blank version and that's the version that I'm actually using in this video and then there's also a version that has writing on it and it's the original library card that I got from a church sale in like downtown Chicago a while ago. It's about 20 years ago and it's from the 60s. It's dated. So it has the actual writing from the person who checked it out. So that's a good little find. So just head on over to Gina Makes It and pick up your library card if you want it to go inside of your pocket. I separated the two files so you don't have to print both. You can print one or the other. And so the way that I printed the blank one is here. I just did two copies to a page and it shrunk it down to fit it to 89% but I increased it up to about 94%. So it's really close to the top. And it is slightly, I mean, like it's millimeters smaller than what the original should be. So it works just fine. And then this way you get to economize your paper and you get more bang for your buck. So I am just trimming off the sides and I'm going to glue these together with some fabric tack glue. That's the glue that I always like to use. And I just transferred it into a little bottle because my mom was tired of seeing me shake my bottle <laughs> on my videos. And so she bought me some little bottles from the dollar store and said, try these, see if these work. And it seems to be working um, a little bit better than that big large bottle. So I'm just trying out my library card in my pocket and I am very pleased with the way that it looks and I'm just going to finish trimming these down. So all of my library cards are trimmed down and now I want to do a, just a slight embellishment on these pockets. I wasn't really going to do anything to them at this time but I don't like that raw edge on the top of the pocket. I think it might be because I uh, attached two pieces of paper together that it looks extra raw to me because I did do one as like a sample that was a double-sided more cardstocky type paper and I didn't get the same sort of feeling from that top part so I'm just gonna get some vintage lace and I'm going to attach it to the top of every one of these pockets I'm just gonna see I'm gonna do different techniques for different ones and see what I like but I really do like adding that little extra piece of embell embellishment to the top because I feel like it finishes the pocket. I'm just using my paper clips as pins to hold down the lace or the trim. This trim actually isn't vintage. This is the only one that isn't. That was from Joann's just a couple weeks ago. I added it to some curtains I have hanging in my house and so I had a little bit left over and I just threw it in there. But um, so the rest of this is a vintage lace that I've picked up from various estate sales or flea markets. And I'm using those paper clips, like I said, as pins to hold it in place because I am going to sew everything shut. So I'm not gluing the sides. You very easily could glue the sides. I'm actually, actually going to sew my sides down. So after I figure out what lace I want on which pocket, I actually go through. I had not paper clipped those properly because I have to sew the top separately first because I don't want to sew the pocket shut so I have to sew that 
first and then I'll go around the entire sides with the sewing machine itself. So I just want my paper clip to clip the lace to the little flap, not to the back of the pocket, but just to the little flap because I'm just going to take my sewing machine and run it across the top of the lace and the top of that pocket, but not the back portion. And then once that's done, I'm going to connect it all together and I'm going to run my sewing machine around the right side, the bottom and the left side. And then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to do it again because I want sort of a messy uh, perimeter tracing with the sewing machine itself. This one is giving me a little bit of a problem because it is so big and wonky, but I do like the way that it looks with that little floral print. Uh, but you can see here, I'm readjusting my paper clips and I'm just attaching it to the front part so I don't sew my pocket shut, which is actually possible <laughs> to do. I've done it before, so I'm glad that I thought about it before I actually did it. So now I take it to my sewing machine and I finished all of my sewing and here it is done. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my cards fit inside still because I did just do some, you know, loose sewing and I wasn't measuring seam sizes or anything. So I want to make sure that each one fits the way that it should and it does. And as I'm going through this, I realize I don't have enough library cards. I've only made five and I made uh, six pockets. So I just go back and quickly print off another library card and attach it. And later on, I add it to the pocket itself. I'm also trimming a little bit of those loose threads that I have hanging off the side. I like it to look a little messy but not super messy. I like there to be a nice balance between neat and messy if that makes any sense whatsoever. Someone's probably thinking what are you talking about lady? How can something be neat and messy at the same time? But I'm just trying to find a nice little balance. So of course I can't stop there. I have this vintage tin of vintage buttons that I just got over the weekend from the flea market and the price tag I don't know if you saw there said eight dollars but my mom worked her negotiating magic and we got it for six dollars and there are some really good gems inside of here and so for some reason I was feeling like the whole button thing with these pockets so I actually add buttons to all of them except for one and that's the one that has sort of that bigger wonkier lace on it but every one that I just picked out of there just randomly just sort of worked right away it was like magic it was crazy this was the first time that I actually sort of went through the buttons and I didn't really have to do much in order to find ones that matched really nice Once I have all those buttons squared away, I go back to this pocket because I feel like that lace is a little bit too long for the pocket itself. I felt like it needed another layer on top. So I just cut another piece of the lace and I'm kind of just scrunching it up and I take it to my sewing machine and I create a little ruffled piece of lace. You do this by creating a very long stitch on your sewing machine and then you're able to pull the thread back and forth and it kind of bunches it up and it creates a little bit of a ruffle. And I'm just adding a little bit of glue and I think it's the perfect little touch to the top part of this. It just really completes the pocket. So as I said before, I don't add a button here, but what I do add is one of those texture paste butterflies that I made in my video last week. I will link that down below in case you're interested in seeing that. Now when I went through the video and I made it, I had said I'm not sure if I'm going to use this type of textured paste stencil and I've used all three of them. It's actually one of, uh, it's the one that I've used the most of out of all of the texture paste 
pieces that I made. I don't know. It's just cutting it out off of this paper. It just, I've used it on so many different things. So if you're on the fence about using a solid stencil or die cut like this with some texture paste, just do it because you're going to find a lot of uses for it. So I take it to my sewing machine and I do answer the question, can you sew on texture paste? Yes, you can successfully sew on texture paste because I just did it. So I like the way that that butterfly looks just off to the corner. I feel like it really completes the whole pocket itself. So now I'm just going to go through and glue down the rest of my buttons. For some of the buttons I'm adding thread, others already had thread in them, and some other ones I'm mixing together thread and no thread. I think it just kind of adds to the overall shabby vintage look of the pockets itself. I'm also adding this piece of paper inside there in case I have any seepage with my glue. I definitely do not want to glue the buttons down or glue my pocket shut. So putting that temporary piece of paper there just creates a little bit of a barrier between those two layers. And so I take it out when I think the glue is dry and I don't have a glued pocket shut. So that's good. So that's going to wrap up today's video. Uh, head on over to my website to get your free pocket template and then head on over there tomorrow to get your free library card if this project interests you. As always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.